Hola, welcome to the Good News Roundup, your weekly digest of what is going well in the world. Here at this week's Positive News Stories, scientists have identified the brain mechanism behind memory loss. In old age, we take a huge step towards a revolutionary quantum internet. A new gel can absorb water from desert air and make it drinkable. An EU plan to make solar panels mandatory on all new buildings. The Canadian chef helping immigrants into the workplace. And finally, the French village lit up by the sea. If you've ever forgotten where you left your keys or accidentally told the same story twice, help may soon be at hand. Neuroscientists at Johns Hopkins have been working with rats to investigate the parts of the brain that control memory. They have discovered a mechanism in the CA3 region of the hippocampus that appears to be responsible for a common type of memory loss and might turn out to be our greatest hope for combating Alzheimer's and other age-related neurological disorders. But as the brain ages, our ability to distinguish patterns diminishes. And as a result, our memory becomes impaired, causing us to become forgetful or repeat ourselves. Researchers noticed that some of the older rats they worked with performed their memory tasks perfectly, even though their neurons and pattern recognition functions were impaired. Some old rats are just as good as, as young rats in performing different memory tasks. Mm. Whereas other rats are really bad. And it's just like people. So there's a lot of variability in, in humans in terms of their cognitive aging and how, uh, how, how the cognitive abilities can decline over age. So we, we see the same thing in our, in our rat population. Something was allowing the older rats to compensate for the deficit, which we also see in those lucky humans who remain surprisingly sharp into their older years. If we can isolate this factor, the hope is that we can replicate it. We know that these same brain region that we're studying is one of the first areas that is affected in Alzheimer's. But if we want to understand Alzheimer's and what it does, we need to understand how the brain ages normally. Can you guess what this is? Lava lamp, lightsaber. It's actually called a living lamp. It's powered by deep sea organisms through a process known as bioluminescence. It's the same natural phenomenon that allows fireflies to light up and algae to glow at night when the water around them moves. Now, bioluminescence is also lighting up the small French town of Rambouillet, about 50 kilometers southwest of Paris. It's the work of a French startup called Glowy, which collects bioluminescent marine bacteria of the coast of France called Alibibrio Fischeri, which is then stored inside tubes filled with salt water, turning them into a kind of fluorescent aquarium. But it's to create a matter première vivant, bioluminescent, to create du mobilier urbain and redessiner the villes de demain to be more respectueux de la biodiversité et de l'environnement. On travaille avec quasiment 50 projets d'aménagement aujourd'hui en France, avec des constructeurs, avec des aménageurs et avec des municipalités également directes. The manufacturing process consumes less water than making LED lights and releases less CO2, while the liquid is also biodegradable. Scientists are working on a groundbreaking new computer that will make the ones we use today seem like antiques. They are using the mysterious powers of quantum mechanics in a way Albert Einstein himself once deemed impossible. Quantum mechanics could be revolutionary for modern life as we know it. Tasks that would take today's supercomputers thousands of years to complete could be performed in minutes. But the thing is, quantum computing needs another technological breakthrough to reach its full potential. It needs the equivalent of quantum internet a network that can send quantum information between distant machines without being connected. It needs what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. And a group of scientists at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands has done just that, spooky computing. This team of physicists use a technique called quantum teleportation to send data across non-neighboring locations in a quantum network. Up until now, researchers have only been able to send data between neighboring nodes, but the new study represents what they call a prime building block for the future of quantum networks and the advances in technology it will bring with it. Our research brings us closer to the quantum internet because um, 
It allows us to connect nodes that are not directly connected with each other in the same way that uh, right now we're having a video call and we're going through multiple computers across the internet to, uh, to connect uh, with each other. In future quantum networks, you'll also need to connect nodes that are not directly connected. And so this is a first step uh, towards realizing that. Pulling water out of thin air just became a reality and not just for magicians. Scientists and engineers at the University of Texas in Austin have come up with a gel film that could offer cheap access to clean drinking water for people living in arid regions around the globe. A third of the world population lives in drylands, which are areas that experience significant water shortages. The gel can pull water from the air in even the driest climates, and it's as cheap as it's sufficient. The material costs around two euros a kilogram, and a single kilogram can produce more than six liters of water per day in areas with less than 15% relative humidity. To give you an idea, Las Vegas, a notably dry US city that sits in the middle of the desert, has an average humidity rate of a little over 30%. And although six liters doesn't sound like much, the researchers say they could drastically increase the amount of water the invention yields by simply making thicker films or absorbent beds. We were inspired by the, the stuff in the kitchen, that in our kitchen, like salt, flour, and um, sugar. It doesn't require advanced equipment or something else. Pulling water from desert air is usually energy intensive and rarely produces much clean water. But this invention is set to change all that. It's also easy to use and simple to replicate. The outlook for Europe's energy crisis might soon get a little sunnier. A new proposal from the European Commission intends to make solar panels mandatory on all new buildings within the European Union. The goal is to make solar energy the largest electricity source in the bloc, replacing reliance on Russian oil and gas supplies with renewable energy. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the European Commission is speeding up their original green energy transition plans, increasing the renewable energy goals to 45% of electricity consumption by 2030. In 2020, renewable energy resources already made up 37.5% of the EU's electricity consumption, meaning the continent is already well on track. The big lessons that we have to take from this war is that renewable energies is not only um, a fundamental question to face the climate goal, but is it the best allies for the European Union uh, for its independence and its uh, a, a strategic autonomy. There's still work to be done. So the Commission's Rep Power EU plan and the Solar Rooftop Initiative is introducing a phased-in legal obligation to install solar panels on new public and commercial buildings, as well as new residential buildings by 2029. If the plan is successful, solar energy will become the largest electricity source in the EU by 2030 with more than half of the share coming from rooftops. The International Energy Agency predicted that by 2050, solar power production will skyrocket to become the world's primary source of electricity. Benvenuti nella nostra cucina. Meet Jessica Rosval. Perhaps you already know her. She's a chef and entrepreneur and has worked alongside triple Michelin star chef Massimo Bottura in his restaurant Osteria Francescana in Modena, Italy for over a decade. And she has received many awards along the way. But her most recent recognitions are for her humanitarian work. This year, she has opened a brand new culinary venture that helps women who immigrate to Italy to find careers and integrate into life in the new country. Roots, the social enterprise restaurant she opened in March with her friend Caroline Caporossi, showcases the cultural diversity of modernist migrant women, bringing the flavors and dishes of their homelands to the Italian public. Our chefs are actually in training, um, and but serving the food in this restaurant. Uh, the menu that we serve is a menu that's inspired by where these women are coming from, and we teach them the technical skills uh, needed to be able to pursue a professional career in cooking, but also non-technical skills that really help uh, in terms of better understanding uh, the Italian, you know, uh, Italian bureaucracy, uh, culture, the history of Modena, uh, the food culture that exists in Modena, which are all also very fundamental and important um, aspects. 
We have had so much support from our community. We have had from the florists to the electricians, to the plumbers, everybody donating their time, everybody donating their energy, their services. The restaurant is full every single night that we're open. Um, people are loving the project. If you've enjoyed this roundup and want to hear more good news, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know in the comments and share our stories with your friends. Good news travels fast. And if you've got a positive story you think we should share, send it to us by commenting below. And remember, some news can be good news.